you, you talk about the reaction that these Shipibo uh, healers, these people have decided, like, we need to stand up to this extractive, uh, this extractive industry uh, that's trying to extract our culture, that's trying to extract our practices for its own purposes. What has been happening since then? I mean, I know this has only been a little less than a year since this event happened, but has there been any, like, major work that has been done that you know of that is trying to bring this uh, history in this context to light? I mean, uh, to be to honest, the most honest question or answer to that question is, is no, I don't, I don't know. Okay. And I don't know how fast. And I mean, so that's something I've you know, pointed towards in, in the book is that, you know, the reason this was being covered and that there's no question amongst the indigenous people there, it got attention because a white guy got killed. Not because an 81-year-old respected fighter for Shipibo and Konobo indigenous rights was murdered, but because a white guy got killed, the cops were there and everybody, you know, the whole charade happened. I, I think there's there's aspects of our reality right now that are just like, you know, it, it's it's hard to sum up because the world just is insane, and you get these these very differing views of reality and on the one hand i want to say that the entire notion of like culture vultures and cultural appropriation is getting a lot more attention not because of white people like me writing a book like this but because indigenous resistance remains such a a strong force for the world and i can see in that thing the things that get me really excited about the world and have always got me excited about the world that come down to indigenous resistance, not so much, you know, kind of revolutionary mantras and things like that. Cause they, they always just peter out and then eventually fall into some form of totalitarian authoritism when and if they actually take part. But indigenous resistance is, is something that's very different and you can see where, where a lot of this seems like it's coming from right now in, in the Americas in particular is the uh, the native fight against oil extraction, uh, against the pipelines. And, you know, I mean, it's it's this horrific reality that is showing that the frontier never, never died. Uh, and, you know, you have particularly when you look at some of the places in Canada, it's, it's a totally different situation even in the United States because there's a lot of areas where this is happening on unceded lands. So it's like this isn't just even like hyperbole to, or hyperbole to say that you know this is this is active colonization. This is legally speaking, this is it's a continued active colonization, um, and you know it, it's it's just insane. I think it's like I think that what what seems to be the case, as far as I can understand it, and as far as I can try to reiterate it, is a lot of indigenous people when they see, particularly white and uh, western activist types for lack of a better word getting involved with all this stuff is kind of like oh you're finally you're finally here you're finally figuring this out to a certain degree but you know we haven't realized the stakes that are truly involved which is pathetic because you know we're talking about it it becomes insane because you can see that people seem genuinely more comfortable with the idea that catastrophic human die-offs are are a looming future that the potential for human extinction is met with less resistance than the notion that just saying none of what we have done has improved anything in our own lives and for civilization itself, or has, has improved anything about this world other than we found ways to make the most of us insanely more miserable and continually defending and devoting ourselves to a system that has never ever made sense. And we have, increasingly just turned more and more towards ourselves and trying to individualize things. And that's why people's kind of reaction to this kind of thing can become, well, you know, my healing is takes precedence because, you know, I'm, I'm the victim of this too. And it's, it's true. Civilization has found a way and domestication has found a way to damage all of us individually. There's no two stories where, you know, somebody's I'm, I'm saying that somebody's version is worse than somebody else. It's just the systemic aspects of it are vastly different. And they will continue to be vastly different. And it's not about your, you know, what you're feeling is less valid than this person, but it's like, you know, it's more about we need to see this bigger picture. You need to understand the way these systems work and how they function and how they continue to drive. And that means looking at civilization. It means looking at extraction. It means understanding the consequences of domestication, but also seeing that, you know, the way that we want to heal 
uh, you know, speaking predominantly as whites, but mainly as Westerners that are just going to be flooding social media and trying to just have these like very public displays of self care or whatever you mm-hmm, want to call it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It can, it can really reduce any communal aspect of, of what is going on in any global ecological context for, for what is going on. So I find it, fascinating and again i get into this more in the book gather remains than i do in cold personality and of course in the forthcoming book of god the country is it's going to be getting it of god and country getting into this a bit more because it goes through and traces the path of religion and how religions arise but also how religion is used as a primary tool of colonization through missionaries um but when we remove ourselves from that context we forget what it means to be human and what it means to be a social animal is the nature of who we are. And as long as we keep isolating ourselves and try and fix ourselves individually, it's never going to happen. And it's always going to fall back into this consumer cycle, which is where something like ayahuasca comes out in the first place. How can I heal myself? And it's true. There might be psychoactive properties that are within ayahuasca that could potentially help open your mind. But you know, there's the same time, if you're never going to see the bigger picture then you're always just going to be trying to sit there and tinker with yourself and make sense of yourself. And But we're a social animal, so we're never meant to make sense in our own context. So when I looked at the healing rituals amongst nomadic hunter-gatherers, and these healing rituals, there's there's no they're, – they're not rituals as we know them. It's not like a mass or something like that. It's an informal thing. They come and they go. They're taken as needed. There's no obligation to take part. It's just like if it's needed, it's needed. If it's not, it's not. But you look at the most egalitarian societies, societies absolutely without any form of sexism, without any form of uh, division of labor, without any kind of hierarchical empowering of some at the expense of others. They had these healing rituals often. Like, I mean, it could be multiple times a week. It could be many times a month. Just totally depends. And if the most egalitarian societies that have ever existed on Earth were healing all the time, what does it say about us that we do none of this at all? And we are just damaged. So it just goes to show it's like the, you know, it's not our place to look at the the coping mechanism that a society in the Amazon has, has, has been using and say, okay, they've got it figured out. Because if you look at their reality, that's why Arvalo's murder didn't make the news. It wasn't Arvalo's murder that made the news. It was Woodruff's. And if they had it figured out, then why is this all happening? Why are they stuck in the situation where they're having to demand that their rights be respected. And this this group that got together and put together the call against spiritual extractivism said, stop calling us shamans. We're not shamans. We're healers. And you have no right to our healing methods. You have no right to these things that we use amongst ourselves to export to other parts of the world and try and make sense of whatever mess you're in. It's never going to happen. Sting getting on a plane and flying to Peru and having some <laughs> experience and then writing about it on social media, it's not helping them. It's not learning anything other than how to be a an in self-indulgent consumer. And that's that's a huge thing. But as far as whether or not anything is changing on a global perspective, I mean, we're just headed towards this collapse at such an unprecedented rate. And it's, you know, you have on the one side, you, you do have this kind of awareness. And I, I hate the term conversation. And people are always like, oh, we're having, Me Too created this conversation. It's like, yeah, some people are talking about it and some people are aware of it. And then, you know, these the Catholic Church, the Christian churches, and all these institutions have organized uh, pedophilia and rape. Like, nothing that's coming out seems to be actually really denting them much. And people keep apologizing for the situation. And really what it creates is a, a, a you know, a, a, a binary kind of split in society where it's like it's all one or the all the other and it, again i mean there's a whole lot of issues about liberal fantasies and how much they think is actually being accounted for by any of this stuff or anything but you know the the world is at this pace where it's just broken down into such small fragments that it becomes in, impossible to put it all together again and it's hard to see that there could be a de-escalation of any of this stuff but um you know with the the killing of john chow who is the American missionary who was killed on the North Sentinel Islands very recently. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Wild Resistance, which is a journal I am the editor-in-chief of, uh, the new issue number six is going to be out this week. Uh, and there's two interviews in there with anthropologists and uh, another person, that uh, uh, scientist uh, Matt Husri Mukherjee and Sita Van Kashwar, that deal with that 
that murder and deal with the history of colonization on the Sentinel Islands. And again, you see these patterns repeating, repeating. And for some reason, John Chow's killing made international news in a way that the killing of other missionaries hadn't. And missionaries are killed all the time. Not enough, I would say. Not a lot of size. <laughs> Not enough. But, you know, there's... Um, I, I kind of, when I interviewed both of them, they've been writing about these situations, and particularly Matt Hussery, uh her book, Land of the Naked People, came out in 2003. That book was dealing with the consequences of climate change on voluntarily isolated hunter-gatherer societies. Like, everything in that book should have just, it, it just nails where we've wound up right now. It's such a, such a scale that I kind of had to ask both of them, because they're both writing about similar things and dealing with very important topics. You know, you guys have been talking about the the problems of contact and the problems of climate change and the problems of uh, conversation about these specific societies since at least the 90s. You know, how is it to look at what's happening right now where climate change in a lot of these scenarios is being talked about, talked about, and also one of the biggest threats to the North Sentinel mm-hmm. Island is this, this colonial ecotourism. Come see these places that are pristine before they're gone. Um, and see different threats how hard is it to keep going with this and i had to actually kind of talk it was particularly Sita. i had to kind of talk her into doing the interview and saying i've already said this stuff enough times like what's different and i, I had to tell them and i kind of surprised myself like the the difference was is for some reason that was being listened to and you know there's i don't know if things are necessarily changing I see signs that give me some sense of promise, but then you see such a backlash and such a guttural kind of uh, individualist Trumpian kind of reactionism that it's just like at the same time, the most profoundly destructive thing, like, you know, in, in the rubber trade, King Leopold from Belgium, uh, he, he was destroying the Congo. He was killing everybody. And he said he was there he was there as a, he was being held as in the international world as being against slavery. Meanwhile, he's leading one of the biggest slavery campaigns in human history. Uh, you know, you get these, these kind of splits between narrative and reality. Uh, it's, it's always been there, but now it's like, you know, because of social media and stuff like that, you can have people saying these things and then expose them at the exact same time. And it just makes people so entrenched in defending it that they go to that further extent. And there will be people who read this book and people who read, learn more about the situation. And they're still going to say, yeah, but what about me? What about how ayahuasca could help PTSD? And it's like, you don't get it. <laughs> and <laughs> it's like, I'm not sitting here writing this to just try and chide anybody and say that the, the, the reasons for healing are the reasons why, you know, the issues with PTSD are not massively real, but just saying, if you're not going to deal with these situations, if you're not going to understand how they come about, we're never going to do anything about it. And it's just going to keep going this way until it just is off a cliff. So I want to believe more people are listening and more people are paying attention. And it's not like the way that indigenous resistance is right now. It's not as if indigenous people are doing anything different than they ever have. It's just that now some more white people are looking at it and saying like, oh, hey, take a look at this. Let's see what's happening over here. 